Good morning. Um, today we're going to talk about uh, shoulder impingement syndrome. This is perhaps one of the commonest uh, conditions that uh, affects the shoulder. It occurs because of the anatomy of the shoulder and in particular the fact that one of the large muscles of the rotator cuff called supraspinatus effectively runs in a tunnel between two parts of the shoulder. Therefore when it runs between the tunnel it is possible for it to get caught or impinged. The commonest cause of impingement is what's called a supraspinatus tendonitis, which means that the tendon becomes inflamed. Because the tendon has a very poor blood supply, it is unable to get rid of the inflammation, and this causes it to swell and get caught. In addition, there is something called the subacromial bursa, which is a fluid-filled sac, and this becomes involved in the process. Effectively, therefore, as the shoulder moves around, the tendon gets caught. There are other causes of impingement, for example, as we get older, we tend to grow more bone and sometimes soft tissue around the edge of the shoulder under what's called the acromion, and this makes the space in which this tendon is working rather smaller. The final form of impingement occurs as a result of arthritis that affects the joint between the connection of the clavicle onto the main part of the shoulder, that's called the acromioclavicular joint. In terms of symptoms, patients will experience pain, and pain is usually related to activity, typically when moving the arm away from the side. So the arm tends to get caught, particularly under load. It can also occur when putting the arm above the head or behind the head, and sometimes putting the arm across the chest. If the acromacurricular joint is involved, it quite commonly causes pain at night when the patient turns over and rolls onto the side of the shoulder. In terms of diagnosis, this is usually made by means of clinical examination of the patient as they're very specific signs for the forms of impingement. Sometimes and quite often investigation is required and this can take the place of an x-ray although this is of limited value as this is a soft tissue problem and more commonly ultrasound and best of all MRI scanning is used as this shows the nature of the impingement, how the tendon is and more importantly where the inflammation is. In terms of treatment, treatment can occur by means of avoiding activity anti-inflammatory medication and steroid injection and this is the commonest way in which this condition is treated and steroid injection will very commonly cure the condition. For cases which are resistant to conservative treatment or to injection then one may have to consider surgical treatments.